Excellent. Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us today for this special School of Study webinar. This is with our colleagues from the Creative Arts team. Um, we're going to be going through quite a lot of information for you today. So as I've said at the start, the session is recorded just in case anybody's internet cuts out, we'll be able to share a copy of the webinar later as well for you so that you don't miss any important bits. Um, now, we do have a lot of colleagues in the session today who will be able to answer your questions after the presentation. So my name's Kat and I work in the International Office. Hi everybody, my name's Jess and I work with Kat in the International Office. Hi everybody, my name's Ellen, I'm Head of International Engagement and I work with Kat and Jess in the International Office as well. Hi everybody, I'm Lewis Harrison Barker. I'm the Senior Lecturer for Student Engagement and Skills in the School of Creative Arts. Hi folks, I'm Robert Wheatley. Uh, I do social media here for our School of Creative Arts and I also help us with things like outreach. Hey everyone, I'm Michaela Laird. I'm the tutor for writing and admissions for Creative Arts. I also teach on animation and I'm a former graduate of UH. Hello everyone, I am Ivan Phillips, I am Associate Dean of School of Creative Arts um, with particular responsibility for learning and teaching, but I also teach. Uh, I teach on model design mainly, um, also bits of digital media design and uh, occasionally animation when they let me in. Hello. Excellent. Thank you very much. So as you can see, you're in good hands today. Um, we'll be able to answer your questions after the slideshow as well. Um, so before we get started, um, just to give you a bit of an overview about what information we're going to go through today, um, you're going to get an introduction to the School of Creative Arts. Then we're going to go through some updates on start of term preparation. So some things that you can do now. And then after that, that's when we're going to go to the Q&A. But if you do have questions throughout the session, please do use the Q&A button on your screen and then our panellists will be able to answer those as well for you. Um, now, before we start the session, we're just going to do a quick poll just to see who we've got in the room. You might have some fellow future classmates here with you today as well. Um, so which subject will you be studying when you join us in September? Now, um, this is an anonymous poll, so you can feel free to take part and this should pop up on your screen now. So you've got lots of different options there, um, such as art therapy, architecture, digital animation and games, art, fashion, film and media, graphic design, illustration, fine art, sound or music related courses, photography and comics and concept art. So if you just take your time um, to select which category you'll be coming to study and then we can see who we've got in the room as well and I'll be sharing the results on screen. So brilliant I can see a lot of you have already filled in your answers which is excellent so I'll just leave that open for another moment or so just because everybody's nearly filled in their answers now which is great. Okay, so I'm going to close the poll in now. We'll have a look at these results together. Almost everybody participated, which is brilliant. Thank you. Okay, so there's the results on screen. You should be able to see those. So we've got a really good mix of people in the audience today. Um, lots of people coming from digital animation or games art. Um, a few of you from architecture, fashion and fine art. Lots of people coming for graphic design, illustration, film and media sound and music and then a few for comics and concept art as well so really good mix in the audience you might even be able to see some existing student work for your course as well during the session okay um, and with that i'm going to pass to my colleagues to give us an introduction from the school okay uh, welcome everyone uh, there's quite a lot of um of slides and, and information here and what we're going to try and do is give you a little bit of a flavor of what it's like to be in the school of creative arts at university of hertfordshire so i'm going to show you some student work um, talk you through some of the basics of how the school works and what it what it's like um, i don't want to go into too much of the finer detail really I, i'd like to just go, kind of give you the, the sort of atmosphere and i think what really hopefully will make you excited is to see some of the student work as well that, that, that our students have done. 
Uh, so that's what a lot of the emphasis is going to be on. And there's a few little bits of video as well with some of our um, students and staff um, talking. Okay, so um, what you can see in that image is actually the, the current gallery cafe. Um, that's in the sort of heart of the school. We're, we're spread across a number of buildings uh, on the College Lane campus. We're a, a two campus university. Um, and the gallery is really where uh, kind of people come to get, get coffee and drinks and sandwiches. It's quite a lively space as you can perhaps see from the image. Um, I suppose one of the things to, to mention is, you know, we're, we're quite an old school. We have quite a long heritage, although we're a, a relatively new university. Um, the Creative Arts School at the University of Hertfordshire can trace its roots back to St Albans Art School uh, way back in the 19th century. So we've been around for a while. Obviously, we've changed a lot in that time. Um, and in, you know, one of the big changes, of course, is that we've had to keep up with the changing world of creativity and, and design. So, you know, we go with the technology. Um, one of the things we I might mention just on the side, it's not in the slide, but we're probably about to become a little bit more vibrant because we're uh, going to be joined for next year by our colleagues in uh, humanities uh, who are uh, joining the school, uh, which is kind of exciting. Um, and just a little bit scary, um, but scary because of the possibilities. Um, and I suppose what that indicates is, you know, we are constantly changing, you know, we're developing new courses all the time. So there are courses in development now, which which don't even exist uh, to applicants currently. So, you know, there's constant kind of change, movement, excitement, collaboration, um, trying to get our students to kind of meet each other and work across programmes and produce work uh, together. Um, one of the big things that, that hopefully our students notice is obviously we have a, people like me. I'm a career academic. I just love university. I love learning. Uh, I carry on learning, even though I'm very old now. Um, I learn from my students, hopefully as much as they learn from me. Um, but a lot of our teaching staff are also industry professionals. Um, they don't, like me, eat drink sleep university they also work in industry they actually go out there and and uh, and make the stuff that you might watch or see in galleries or um, enjoy in, in terms of products and so on we have over a hundred teaching staff who are based in the school some are fractional so they work part of the week but many are full-time a lot of our um, staff are of course themselves practitioners so you know if you're being taught uh, animation you are being taught by people who are animators uh, they don't just know the software they use it and they make their own work um, probably one of the most wonderful things about working at University of Hertfordshire and I've been I've been at University of Hertfordshire for 20 oh my word I've been I've been at University of Hertfordshire for 24 years <sighs> I sigh um, I was only coming temporarily and I stayed um, and one of the great things about it is it's an incredibly diverse community. And I mean that in terms of um, the ages of students, the backgrounds of students. We are a global campus. Uh, we have people from all around the world. Um, and that's exciting. That's, you know, that, that's, um, it means no two classes are ever the same. Uh, and that's really enjoyable. And it means, you know, culturally and socially, the campus is, is uh, exciting too. Next slide, please. So um, I'm particularly proud as, as a, one of the associate deans in the school. Um, we have a lot of success amongst our student body. Um, our students put their work out, not just for assessment to go towards their degree classifications, but they put their work out into the world for competitions um, and we win prizes every year. Uh, you can see there a, a list of, of uh, some of the things that our students have achieved. Um, through their work, so, you know, we are first in the world for games design and development. Uh, that's the Complete University Guide for 2022, The Guardian newspaper. This is fresh this year, uh, the first in the UK for animation and games design. Um, we've been recognised by the World Brand Design Society for the first, for being the first in the UK for design education. And we're the first in the UK for creative media and entertainment. That's uh, one of the very, very prestigious rookie awards, which we regularly um, get prizes in uh, every year. So it's, it's you know, testimony to our staff and their hard work, their input and their um, innovative approach to teaching, but it's also, of course, testimony to our students who produce work which every year 
um, just blows me away with how uh, fantastic it is. Next slide. Um, just a, a little overview of some of our facilities. As I say, we are spread across, I think at last count, five buildings uh, on the College Lane campus. Um, so every subject area tends to have its own sort of um, gravity. It, it, they, people go to their own kind of areas, but hopefully there's a lot of movement between the schools, uh, at the different buildings, uh, and students hopefully wander around a little bit and meet each other. So obviously we have shared spaces. Uh, you've seen an image of the cafe that we have. Um, just off the cafe, there is an art shop, um, which has subsidized um, products, which our students use, you know, art products and so on. Um, and is a friendly place as well. Um, we have um, studios and spaces all over. Every single student who comes to our school can use any of the equipment. Um, I hesitate to say that, but it, it's, it's the truth. I mean, obviously when something's being used for teaching, uh, it can't be open to the whole world, but you know, there are facilities which, as long as you've had the correct uh, induction to and the health and safety checks and so on, um, you can use the equipment uh, that's there. So for instance, you know, you could be a digital animator who wants to uh, use a lathe, a bit of physical um, uh, machinery. Uh, as long as you've had the training and the induction, which we would offer, you can use that stuff. Um, we have a gallery. Um, we have uh, construction areas, um, animators, so people working in digital media. It helps them with their skill set and when they go out with their portfolios, if they can make stuff physically as well. You know, so we have animators, our animators do still life classes, they, they will do life drawing. Um, they may learn to make maquettes, physical um, models, which they, they use to base their, um, their animated work on. So it's really important that we have the kind of physical facilities as well as the software uh, and the software licenses. So all of those things you can see like dark rooms, photographers, jewelry benches, um, we have uh, obviously we've got a fashion program, so we have uh, all the sewing machines and so on. Um, printing facilities, which includes 3D printing, uh, and we have loan stores, uh, so that our students can book out some of the more um, specialist kit um, uh, and take it out. So you know, obviously we have a film and TV production course, and our students can book out cameras and uh, sound equipment and so on, uh, and plenty more than that as well. And I'm just looking straight at that robot there, which was done by one of our recent model design graduates, uh, Harry, um, uh, who I taught. Um, but I, I saw that that uh, particular droid um, take shape in front of my eyes over a period of, of weeks and months. Uh, very exciting seeing that kind of work develop. Uh, the image at the top there is the uh, is the art shop and someone browsing with what looks like a very full bag. Next slide. And this is actually a video.
Wow. I'm glad I took my motion sickness pills this morning. Um, we really do move that fast in Hertfordshire. You may have heard those notions about seeing your life flash before your eyes. That's a little bit like what that looks like to me. That's, that's a really good kind of sense of how the school looks. Um, and really that's a walking tour through um, the different buildings, the different areas you'll have seen as part of that um, huge amounts of the, the kind of equip equipment that we have, the kit, different kinds of, of kit. And you'll have seen some of the labs uh, and some of the spaces that we, we occupy. Uh, and hopefully as well, you've got a kind of sense of the, the, the space of the campus, which is a, a kind of lovely area to walk around on a, on a nice day like we've got today, as I look out of my shed window. Um, as you say, some of these slides are showing student work. So we've got here a piece of work by Emma Cullen. Uh, and obviously you can see that this is a, a bit of design work um, uh, for, in, I think, interior architecture and design. Uh, so it, the idea of a kind of design space. Next slide. So one of the things that you will hopefully be aware of if you've been looking at, at University of Hertfordshire, um, our position in, in terms of the UK, um, I'm actually from the northwest of England, uh, so quite away from Hertfordshire. But if you come to, to where we are in Hatfield, um, which uh, I would have grown up thinking of as down south in, in English terms, um, we're quite near London. Um, it, it's a hop on a train. Um, to get to, to King's Cross and obviously being near London, what that means is you've got uh, you've got a foothold into one of the most exciting cities in the world. Uh, and if, if you're into creative arts of any kind, whether it be film, animation, fine arts, photography, there's a whole host of things you can go and see. So, you know, the galleries of London, the Tate Modern, uh, Tate Britain National Portrait Gallery, the British Museum, uh, National History Museum, um, huge amounts of, of uh, wonderful things, the Courtauld Institute and so on. Um, one of the things, and we're just coming up to that period of the year now, our final year undergraduates, for instance, uh, just in, at the end of May and June have their end of year show. As part of that, there are things like the Sonic Festival where our music students have a, a week long uh, festival of music that's just taking place. Um, we, we host our own exhibition on campus, but also many of our programmes take their work into London uh, and other areas around about Hertfordshire. So um, there are things like uh, the uh, New Blades, which is a, an exhibition, uh, an indus industry exhibition for model design students. And that happens in uh, June in just a, a few weeks time. Um, other things you may be interested to hear about. Uh, we have a, a careers and an enterprise service who can help students while they're students to uh, get placements uh, and to develop their own uh, freelance skills, for instance, but also there are live projects that our programmes will engage with, and increasingly so. So students will uh, work with um, live briefs from real companies to develop work. Um, the university offers things like flair awards these are awards offered to students who have shown particular entrepreneurial skills or in uh, or initiative um, and you know there are money prizes behind things like flair to help people set up their own businesses and so on next slide seeing these slides and videos is quite exciting because i'm seeing students i haven't seen for years uh, you know the recent slides but because the last few years have seemed so strange you sort of see faces coming back to you. Um, what we're seeing here is a, a piece of work by a, a student, uh, Rimal Bat. This is a fire evacuation breathing apparatus. And what you what is here is a, actually a piece of work from our product and industrial design um, course. So this is um, design work, but aimed at, at real world um, challenges and issues. Um, it's a really interesting work, but you know, it, it gives a sense of the kind of diversity of the kind of work our students are doing because clearly students working in product design are going to be producing very different work from those who are in graphic design or fine art or photography. You know, so we've got a kind of real cauldron of, of um, interesting work taking place. And that's why I think it's really exciting for our students to work together um, because it's obvious for uh, music students to work with animation students perhaps to, to offer soundtrack work for instance but it's perhaps less obvious when a, a graphic design student might be helping a, a music student with some uh, 
designs for their, their um, uh, music releases and so on. Next slide. Those are some uh, sketches that are um, um, prototype sketches for some uh, for the same project you've just seen. So, so for the uh, the fire mask. And actually, I'm one of those tutors who I, I enjoy students' work in progress and the sketches and, and notebooks, perhaps almost as much as I enjoy the final pieces. I like to see where how artists and designers get to their end points. So I enjoy music that's not fully formed and I like to look at uh, students' design books. Uh, I think it's where you can tell a lot about how a person works and how they think and how they get to their end product. Next slide. Okay, and this is the same product. This is, uh, this is the student um, receiving awards. And as you can see, it was quite a, a set of awards that he, um, uh, that Rimmel, uh, achieved for that particular piece of design. Design Magazine, Forbes, The Guardian, and Design Week all recognize that particular piece of work, which is uh, fantastic. Next slide. Um, that's a piece of uh, artwork, I think, by a student on Applied Arts. Just a rather beautiful piece, which I thought you might like to see. Next. Um, and this is uh, a piece of work you can see by Tiana Rawlins, who is uh, one of our film, uh, filmmaker students. Um, this is doing some collaborative work with a 3D artist, Natalia Hartabus. Is this a video or a, a still? This is a still. Um, Michaela, uh, since you're here, do you, do you maybe want to uh, discuss a bit more about the animation side of things? Would that be okay? Yeah, sorry, it took a second for the mic to turn back on. No, it's okay. I'm <laughs> no, um, interestingly enough, Tiana Rowland is one of my students. Um, she worked very hard on this. So on animation, we obviously have um, a lot of animation going on, but they have uh, three, no, four separate pathways at the moment. So as you can see below, we have 3D uh, animators, 2D animators, uh, VFX and games art, and then comic and concept art. A lot of it is collaborative work by the time you get to your final year, but it's a great chance for people to really develop their art style. You'll, uh, you'll be working with some amazing uh, animators who have all had industry experience and some amazing game developers who have also had years in, of experience. For comics and concept art, you'd be working with uh, Frank, who whose surname is now escaping me, Frank Victoria, that's it, who has had a absolutely fantastic career in both comics and film. He did the concept art for the Hobbit movies, which is fantastic. It is a hell of a community, people yeah. sharing their passions for animation and oh. all things nerdy, which is what I found working on the course. Um, Tiana has just finished. Uh, she had her final hand in the other day, and I believe she got very good marks for this. I think it's all of the, our animation. Say, um, Pardon? Yeah, everything nerdy. I think we should have that on our promotional materials. Oh, work. we've been debating putting it on like our hearts jumpers, like everything nerdy UH animation. Yeah, <laughs> it's worth mentioning as 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 Michaela says. For a lot of our programs, one of the core things that students will find is that the work they produce is collaborative. It kind of has to be, uh, and that mirrors uh, industry practices. So for instance, if you're, if you're an animator, pretty much on all of the animation strands, you'll be doing work with other students because no, if you're looking at a 3D film, for instance, no single student can do all of that work. So it has to be a kind of um, collaborative piece. Some of our 2D students might produce individual pieces that they, they craft on their own but generally it's collaborative work similarly with film and, and tv production um, students will develop specialisms and they'll they'll work in teams uh, which is great you know that is part of the community aspect of, of the production obviously if you're working in uh, fine art or photography you may be doing much more individualistic pieces but uh, a lot of the film-based or time-based work is is collaborative and you'd find that in music as well uh, yeah and mickey mentioned frank victoria yeah, when he first arrived at university, I had model, de model design students who aren't even taught by him most of the time. 
um, they were going over to sort of see him basically because he'd done work on the Hobbit. It's, it was sort of um, almost terrifying uh, admiration for this man. But we also they have still come over now. Yeah, I bet they do. They also they, they're not half as impressed by people like me, I have to say. Um, not that I'm bitter. Also, um, we, we have Mark Wallman who works on VFX. Uh, his greatest claim to fame is he did the uh, the night bus in Harry Potter, I think, in the film. Anyway, next slide. And this is a rookie's film, very recent. Hot off the press, this. So that little showreel, um, I've mentioned the rookies competition before. As you could see at the end of that showreel, the, the students in the school have amazing track record of success in the rookies uh, competition, which is globally recognized. That showreel is uh, showcasing some previous student work, which has won uh, rookies awards. You can see the kind of standard of the student work. Um, it's, it's astonishing. And uh, that was produced, I think, to, to sort of encourage, not that they need much encouragement, the current um, cohort of, of animation students to undergraduates uh, and postgrads put work in as well to, um, to put their work forward for rookies. Because sometimes you do need to give students a nudge to believe they're as good as you can see that they are. Um, but every year they, they, they do amazing stuff. What we're looking at now is a little piece of work by some of our architecture students. This is uh, by uh, Diego, uh, and it's, uh, as you can see, some architectural design work. Um, and the, the architectural side of the school is relatively new, but the work that the students are producing and the contacts they're making with industry are already incredible, you know, extremely impressive. And we have a very um, dynamic uh, and impressive uh, uh, team of tutors and industry professionals working with our architecture and our interior architecture students, both at undergrad and postgrad level. Next slide. So again, this is a piece of architectural design work. This is Ashi's work. Um, I'm particularly pleased to see a dog there. Always pleased to see a dog. Next slide. I think I should I should say go if you could go back one. Sorry. Obviously, it's it's um it's a view of how a particular uh, piece of architecture would look. The architecture we're looking at is the um, the upstanding building in the background there, uh, and how that would look on the skyline of um, I believe that's St Albans. I could be wrong. It's it near, is indeed. Yeah, so it's near to uh, near to um, Hatfield. Mickey, am I wrong? Is that not an architectural student's work? It is. Uh, no, no, it is. It's just that is St Albans. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I, I would just say, yeah, so a very important thing for architects to do is, you know, they might want to come up with a uh, a really, and as this design is very interesting design, but besides everything else that they have to consider, um, what they also have to consider is where it's going, because a design and a building can look incredible, but does it, does it overshadow, uh, does it, does it uh, negatively stand out? Uh, so those are all things that our architecture students have to consider too. So it's not just about the work that they produce, but how it impacts the environment around them as well. Just thought I'd sort of throw that in, Ivan. No, it's, um, you know, how does it look on the St Albans skyline? St Albans is very close to Hatfield, uh, a very interesting and, and lovely uh, town. Yes. And in fact, that image, if you followed where those people are walking right down there, it's the bottom of the image, um, past where the, uh, the new building pro projection is, 
um, you'd end up at St Albans, um, at the Abbey in St Albans, which is where our graduation ceremonies uh, take place for undergraduates. And it's a, an incredible, an incredible setting for some incredible ceremonies that uh, see our students wearing their robes and uh, looking splendid. Yeah. Um, you very rarely see a stray dog in St Albans Town Centre, I have to say. But... <laughs> OK, thank you. Next slide. OK, Aisha Stanton's work, this is, uh, I believe, from a uh, graphic design and illustration programme. Uh, we have wonderful work produced by the um, graphic design illustration students. And again, it, it wins prizes every year. Um, there's, the, there's a wonderful award, I think it's called the Giant Pencil, which uh, our students have won on a number of occasions in recent years. Are they uh, DNAD pencils? DN, DN, it's D and A D, so it looks D like and the, D. It's a very confusing title on purpose. It looks like the word dead, which I think was deliberate. It does a bit. D and A D, and, and there is a giant pencil that you can win, which um, a variety of them, yeah. It's almost worth becoming a, a, an illustrator or a graphic designer just to win one of those pencils. I think. I'm oh, just just to say real quick with regarding like graphic design and illustration. What's cool is that there's a uh, for undergraduate there's like a shared first year, right? So there's this uh, there's this allowance of our students to uh you know because they initially that we call it kind of graphic design and illustration because initially students are encouraged to explore both areas of graphic design and illustration because we want them to really think about both uh both aspects of these and think okay which one am i more interested in uh, and then they can then pursue a specific pathway later on so some will go some might start really being interested in illustration or graphic design and then go in completely different pathways and that's the kind of the point of why the program operates as it does and what's nice is this, as this work by uh, Aisha shows is that we encourage uh, the use of um, you know kind of more traditional elements of art and encourage the digital manipulation of it so art like this for example it wouldn't surprise me if a student actually utilized some of our workshops to craft like a linograph or any kind of other kind of print uh, print that design in a physical format and then scan it and then digitally manipulate it. So we encourage our students to look at the kind of traditional realm of things because sometimes that, uh, in, especially with graphic design and illustration, specifically that is what will actually get your result that you want. And so we're kind of teaching them to use both, recognize the use of both the digital world and the, uh, and the traditional world. But yeah. yes. Because we live very much in a hybrid world. We do, we do. And we, which is why we value the, the print facilities and so on that we have in the school. They're really important to us. Exactly. I think that, I mean, the point Robert makes is a really good one as well. Most of our undergraduate pro programmes have a common first year. So on model design, for instance, the students will eventually choose a, a particular pathway, which may be model making, it may be character creation, but they will do a common first year. Similarly, in, um, in animation, the students tend to do a common first year undergraduate level and then specialise. It's obviously, it's structured uh, a little differently at post-grad level because of course, people generally have a clearer sense of their pathways by then. Next slide. Okay, um, graphic design work by Jessica. Um, very nicely done. You can see the kind of quality of the work there and uh, a lovely example of symmetry as well. Was that linked to a, a live brief, do you know, Robert, or is that? Let me look up the specific award real quick. Sorry, I that was the one thing I completely forgot to add to my. Uh, I was about to add the um, the notes of what the specific. So this relates to the World Brand Design Society, and these were, I believe, the twenty twenty three winners. Yeah. Uh, and I believe uh, uh, Jessica got a silver mark for this, which is a it's a very very good achievement. Uh, some of our other students also achieved. Uh, so one of our other students, um, Matthew Webb, or sorry, rather Matt Webb, uh, got a uh, a bronze mark for this as well for branding they did for um, for the Brisbane uh, Brisbane Australian uh, Olympics coming up or Paralympics, I think I can't remember, but yeah, uh, so yeah, this is one of as Ivan was referring to previously. These are one. Uh, this is some of this is some of many of our, uh, our award winning students. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Robert. Next slide. I think I'm, I'm just aware of the time. We might need to keep going a little bit faster. So this is um, a little video by one of our former students um, giving a little bit of a, an overview.
So our major project is um, a story about a bat and a butterfly, and in particular a bat who's very insecure um, because of this beautiful butterfly. And there's a um, nice little twist at the end which I think will satisfy the viewer. And in the middle section we've got a kind of psychedelic dream sequence um, that kind of shows a transition of the bat's mindset. So um, my responsibility alongside kind of being part of the story development and, you know, uh, designing the characters, things like that, um, my primary focus is something called um, texturing, look development and groom. Um, so it kind of means that I'm responsible for the look of the character. Um, and then also groom, it means kind of like the hair and fur. Um, so it's quite a quite a long process, but it's it's good to be involved in both sides of that. And alongside that as well, I kind of take on an organisational role. Um, I'm a massive nerd for spreadsheets, so um, I do something which is uh, essentially called production. So um, creating, you know, documents, tracking, scheduling, um, assigning tasks that need doing, things like that. Okay, and um, just in passing, uh, Lisa May was uh, one of our uh, school community organisers, uh, so they're sort of our super reps, uh, as well as being a very high achieving and, and impressive student. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about engagement and attendance, attendance just to say, um, you know, we as staff work really hard to give the best possible experience we can for our students and to get them to achieve the full potential they have. But, in return, we expect students to really engage with, with their studies, and we hope that's what they want to do anyway, because that's why they come to us. Next slide. And I've talked a little bit about the career prospects and the connections we have with industry. I've talked a little bit about our degree show and so on, and our careers and employment team. Uh, just to say that our the careers and employment team will continue to support our graduates um, following graduation. Um, so it's not just while you're with us, it's, it's for uh, some time afterwards as well. Uh, and the final bit from me, I think, is one of our subject group leaders who's got uh, just a few words to say uh, about the design area and architecture. I'm Silvio Carta. I'm an associate professor and head of design in the School of Creative Arts at the University of Hertfordshire, where I coordinate a research group called Architecture Plus Research Group. We work with care homes and health settings, and it's where we try to improve residents' patients' experience in the, in the health settings and the care homes. We've been looking at therapeutic environment, the healing environment. When you have access to a natural environment, for instance, you see some lovely tree from the window from your room, those are elements that have a huge impact on the well-being of the person staying in, in the setting. We've been combining elements of interior architecture, interior space, with regulations, with the agenda and with the driver of care home providers and obviously the health and safety regulations. And we use AI there to actually combine all these elements into kind of something that can give us slightly different special configurations and therefore we believe that by doing this we can help residents to feel better to stay in a, in a, in a better place in a place where they where they're comfortable when they feel they're part of a sort of healing process we have been looking at how a resilient community might look like and therefore we have been using ai and certain object detection methods to recognize patterns of, of physical space in our project we found for instance studying the city of copenhagen we find that a, a key part of that particular resilient community is skate parks and swimming pools and entertainment venues. We use AI to extract, to understand what, what these features might be. And it's something that a normal designer cannot do. We want to create buildings that work better, that are safer. We also want to make sure that we create spaces and places for people to live better. So that's just a little insight into some of the architectural stuff. And you'll notice, you know, that the Silvio is particularly interested in using technology and, and AI and so on as part of that process. I'm going to hand back to Kat now because I've talked far too much. That was brilliant. Thank you so much, Ivan and colleagues as well. Um, some really exciting student work there and to get to see the little previews as well about the um, the rookies 
rewards too that's really good so if anybody does want to watch this back as we've said we will be sharing that recording so you can take your time and digest that work more um, now we're almost at the q and I know some of you have sent in some excellent questions already so if you do have any questions for our colleagues in the school pop them in the q and now but I'm just going to give you a little quick snippet of preparing for the start of term before we move on to q and now You'll all be at various stages of your application journey. Um, some of you might still have conditions to clear, so please do keep an eye on your offer letters and make sure that you are sending in those outstanding conditions to the admissions team. Um, if you haven't already done so, this is the time where you need to pay your deposit as well to secure your place on the course. Once you've cleared your deposit and your conditions, the admissions team might ask you to send in additional things like your financial checks or attend a credibility interview. But once you've completed everything, that's when they can create the CAS for you and you can use that for your visa application. Now, we're just going to do another short poll. Um, so outside of the academic area, there's lots of different things happening at Hearts. Um, so what activity are you most looking forward to participating in? So you might not know about some of these things at this point. Um, so it's a good chance for you to then do a bit more research into it. So, for example, you've got the SU societies. You might want to explore Hatfield or London. Um, or you might want to take part in Heart Squad Sports. So Heart Squad offer a lot of free sports where you can test out different things that you might not have had a go at before. Um, or attending an SU event at the forum as well. So I'm just going to leave the polling open for another moment or two. I can see lots of you are already inputting your answers, which is brilliant. Um, and again, there might be something on here that you, you weren't aware of before. So I'm just going to leave that open for another minute because I can see a lot of you are submitting your answers now and then we'll close it um, so that we can progress with the slides. Brilliant. So if you are just about to submit your answer, do so now because I'm going to end the poll. Perfect. So a really good mix here. Lots of you interested in joining the society, exploring London as well. Uh, for the societies, the SU, they do have lots of different societies. But if you do have a particular interest and the society doesn't already exist, speak to your SU rep because they can help you set one up as well and make friends with similar interests to you outside of your course. OK, now. We're just going to move on to preparing to travel to the UK. So I know that for some of you, it might be the first time you're ever traveling outside your home country. Things might be a little bit, a little bit, little bit scary because you're not sure what to expect. The International Office, we are going to be updating our pre-arrival guide ready for the September 2023 intake. When that's ready, we'll email it out to you, but that'll include everything like registration guidance, packing checklists, um, tips on how to get from the airport to the campus, even things like food that you might want to try when you get here. So lots of resources in there and we'll send that to you when it's ready. But to accompany that, we're also going to be doing our pre-departure webinars. So that'll be similar to this session, but it'll all be around pre-departure and things that you might need to think of when you are traveling to the UK and to Hearts as well. So keep an eye on your emails and we'll be sending you out the invite. Um, travel requirements to the UK. Um, obviously, you no longer need to take COVID tests. You don't need to quarantine or do a passenger locator form, but do check your local country's requirements or any transit countries that you might be traveling through in case you're required to wear a mask on the plane or through the airport as well. Um, and again, as we've said, orientation and freshers week, um, there'll be lots of activities to do there. So do plan your travel and make sure that you are here in time for the start of your course and to enjoy these activities. There'll be an events calendar released closer to the start of term where you'll be able to see what events are happening, sign up for them as well and meet some of the SU reps and those societies and heart squad. Some things that you can do now, um, so the university has created a free module called Getting Ready to Study at Hearts. 
they are going to keep adding to that over the course of the summer. So do start on it now and then you can check back on it as we get closer to start of term. But there's lots of resources on there, including some tips from existing international students about things they wish they'd known before joining the university and traveling to the UK. Tips for academic success, um, video guides to how to navigate around StudyNet and Canvas. Um, so lots of things on there so you can hit the ground running when you join us. Accommodation, really important. If you haven't already sorted out your accommodation, this is the time to do so. We've still got rooms available on campus um, and you can apply for on campus room with your eight digit student ID and conditional offer and you'll be given an offer of a room once your deposit has cleared. You do need to live um, as close to campus as possible if you are looking to live off campus for any reason, but we would always recommend staying in the rooms on campus if you can. Um, absolute maximum two hour commute and 30 mile radius from campus. Now that is the maximum. I would always recommend you live within walking distance because that means that you're not gonna have to pay your commute cost, all the resources like the LRC, the support teams on campus, you've just got a lot easier access to them on your doorstep as well. So if you do need to live off campus, look at the Hatfield area, check out the PAL properties. So PAL is a scheme that the university has set up with the local council and all the properties displayed on the PAL website are in a good state of repair. Your deposit will be held securely. The pictures match what the property looks like in real life as well. Um, but again, do your research if you do look to live a bit further away you need to check out the train timetables the bus timetables how much is that going to cost you if you're looking to get the train you need to look at peak times as well to get there for your morning lectures um, but as we've said on campus is always the preferred routes as well you don't need a UK guarantor your bills contents insurance and wi-fi are included as well um, so just a few things to think about now now we were going to play a short video about some of the rooms on campus, but I think because some of you have asked some really good questions in the Q&A, um, you can watch this in your own time. If you do go to the University of Hertfordshire's YouTube channel, there's lots of various room tours from current students showing you around their bedrooms on campus so it can help you pick which one is right for you as well. And with that, I'm going to open the floor to Q&A. Um, so I'll pass it to my colleague, Jess, who's going to read out some of your questions for us. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kat. Uh, and what a brilliant webinar as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, Lewis, I wonder if you can help us with this question. Um, Apkin has asked, how many students are roughly in a class? And um, what is the kind of average size of a cohort at the university within the Creative Arts School? So that depends entirely on what program you're coming to. Um, our biggest programs are uh, animation, for instance, where we accept over 100 students a year. But then we also have much smaller programs that we might accept less than 20 per year. Um, those programs that have the big cohorts for things like seminars, uh, we do split down as much as we can so that you are still getting um, a more intimate uh, teaching experience, but in terms of the overall cohort size, it completely depends on what program it is you're studying. Brilliant, thank you so much. And Michaela, I wonder if you can help us with this question. Um, so an applicant has said, I would like to know a bit more about MA Games Art and Design um, and which software you mainly use um, and the different skills that I need to improve um, before I come and study this postgraduate course. Excellent question. So our MA Games Art course is run by Neil Gallagher, who tries to make sure we have pretty much industry standard software running at all times. Currently, I believe we have Houdini, Maya, Blender, 3D Max, and a few other ones all installed on the machines on campus, which you will be given training in. So that's don't worry if you're still new to it, although I do encourage trying it a bit yourself at home. I think multiple of them have free versions that you can download just to play around with. Uh, in terms of what skills you would need to improve, draw. That's the best piece of advice I can give you, even if it's just sketching people around. That's brilliant advice. Thank you so much. And then Ivan, I'm wondering if you can help us with these questions. We've had quite a few applicants ask if there are facilities available at the university to make sculptures out of copper and iron. Um, I think the short answer is yes. Uh, I mean, 
sculpture is certainly something our fine art students have um, done traditionally. Uh, and we do, one of our um, fine art tutors, uh, Simeon Lockhart Nelson, is, his medium is large scale sculpture. So certainly, yes, I mean, we'd have to look at the individual projects, I guess. Um, you know, we don't have foundry facilities as such. So, you know, some bigger work may need to be taken outside the actual university, but we do have facilities for working with um, metals. Yeah, for sure. And we do do sculpture. Brilliant, uh, thank often you. Often it would come down to, to questions of scale, really, but that's partly an issue of um, students managing their um, costs as well, because if you start making large sculptures, they cost a lot of money. I can imagine. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Ivan. And Lewis, I'm wondering if you can help us with these questions, but if they're not for you, then you can pass on to the relevant colleague. And um, we've got a few students asking about MSc Music and Sound um, for Games Art, uh, sorry, for Music and Sound for Film and Games. Can you explain a bit more information about how um, students would choose their final major project, how they'd be assessed, and what type of equipment is used at the university as well? Yeah, so um, in terms of how you pick your major project, it's the same for all of our programmes across our MA and BA suites. Um, you would do it in negotiation with your tutors. So it's nothing to worry about at this stage. When you come here and you start those modules, you will uh, have a chat with your tutors about what it is that you're interested in, what it is that you're passionate about, and you'll develop your major projects together. So it's not something that you need to come fully formed. It's a, a negotiation and development process for sure. Um, in terms of the equipment that we have for MSc from games, we have studios, we have musical equipment. In terms of the specifics, um, I don't think any of us on this call at the moment are the right persons to be, people to be able to say exactly what we have, um, but we can find that out for you um, in addition to what we have listed online. But we provide pretty much everything that you need uh, in terms of equipment for all of our programmes. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Lewis. And Lewis, I'm wondering if you can help um, with these questions as well. So we have quite a few applicants asking how they can connect um, to their classmates. Um, and is that a possibility before they come and study or would that be something when they arrive at the university? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of both. And it depends. We can't connect you with students who have applied for your programmes because it's a, a data issue. We can't say who has applied and who hasn't. Um, but if you were to look online at um, there's various forums uh, on the Internet um, and Facebook groups that students will be setting up uh, in preparation for coming to study here. So you can try and reach out to those places and find students that are coming here already. Obviously, once you're here, we uh, try to build student socials, uh, particularly within programmes. You'll have uh, induction events that will introduce you to the other students that are there with you, um, which can't share information about who's coming onto a program up front. Yeah, I think I was sad. Yeah, I think exactly what Lewis says, but it's worth looking if you have a specific course that you know you're going to join. Many, possibly not all, but many of our programs have their own Instagram accounts, for instance, and it's worth um, looking out for those and joining them if, if, um, if, if Robert might know this. Do, do all of our programs have Instagram accounts now? Uh, the majority of our programs have Instagram accounts. Music is the one that I've been in discussion with establishing just because there's a lot. We have a lot of music pathways, obviously, in uh, be it tech or composition. So uh, I need to really converse with them on how we you know, formally do that just because we're representing a lot. But the majority of our programs, for example, um, for example, architecture, um, graphic design and illustration, model design, uh, photography, uh, fashion and fashion business they all have uh, they all do, all do have instagrams and if people want to kind of connect with those i'd be um they can always send us uh, they can always get in contact with us and we can send that them their information but to reiterate what ivan was saying you know we can't really hand out student details obviously just because of a uh, gdpr and to protect our students of course and, and in fairness it's probably better if you find connect connections to the students own um social media because it, it doesn't have us sort of looking over their shoulders a hundred percent. Brilliant. Thank you so much, everybody. I can see it's 12 o'clock now. Um, Kat, do we have time for more questions or should we provide an email address for, for all those final questions? Yeah, what we'll do, colleagues, thank you so much for joining us. I know that some of you may have 
other sessions you've got to get to as well if you do please feel free to to exit now but thank you so much there was so much information in there um for anybody whose question we weren't able to ask live we will put an email address in the chat as well for you um also um myself and jess and any any colleagues who are available to stay on we'll just continue to answer your questions typed while we watch a final short video of some of the student work in a showreel as well um if you do want to get in touch with the international office at all about any accommodation or start of term questions you can check out our instagram channel we do do some live sessions and you can watch those back if you'd miss them as well sometimes we have students on so you can hear about their journey as well um, and you can reach us at international at hearts.ac.uk um, our team will help you out as much as we can as well or if you do have an urgent query feel free to contact us on the telephone number on screen now as well um, but before we play that short video again thank you so much for joining us today um, thank you to all my presenters as well um, and we can't wait to welcome you all to start of term in september Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. I can't get you out of my mind. Like I feel it for the first time Been thinking about you all night I've been searching for this all my life You're just my type I've been looking for a boy who can treat me right but Your dark hair with those eyes so bright They look into my soul and it sparks my life Can I take you there? Like it was the first time, do you remember? Can I take you there? Back to when we felt like this Forever, can I take you there?
Again, massive thank you to everyone who's joined us today. That is the end of our session. Um, I think we have been able to answer all the typed questions. So if you do have any other questions that you would like to ask, if they Um, but if you have international specific questions, email international at hearts. So school specific questions at uhcreatives at hearts.ac.uk. But, but thank you, colleagues. See you in September.